So one of the saddest Democratic candidates is Seth Moulton. Um, I believe him and Tim Ryan are the same person, among with, I think, two or three other Democratic candidates are the same. Eric Swalwell is also the same person as uh, Tim Ryan, who's also the same person as Seth Moulton. Um, anyway, I digress. He went on MSNBC, and he spoke about his campaign and one of Trump's tweets, and I just want to show you how limp his lines of attacks are. Of quote, swamp man Joe Biden, and who he calls a low IQ individual, seems to side with Kim Jong-un on this. Uh, what impact does a tweet like, ha like this have uh, from a president while the president is overseas? Well, let's not forget that part of his job is to be commander in chief. And I've never seen a weaker commander in chief in American history. The way that he cozies up to our enemies uh, and abandons our allies across the globe, insults our own troops, American heroes uh, like John McCain. Uh, it's very hard to imagine uh, anyone going into combat that actually trusts this commander in chief. You know, one of the first things you learn when you join the military is that you can drop out of a run and they'll let you try again. You can fail a test and they'll let you take that test again. But if you lie about anything, you're gone that afternoon. That's how important trust is in, in, in the military. And this commander in chief is someone that we just fundamentally cannot trust. So why is it, if that's the case, that the president's approval rating tends to be higher with members of the military than with the general public? Well, I think that the, the answer to that is that Democrats haven't presented an alternative. And that's why I'm in this race and making national security an issue. Oh, dude, please pump your brakes and stop embarrassing yourself. <laughs> you you want to run on making national security an issue. Let me translate for everybody. I want to run on being a hawk. I'm a Democrat and I'm a hawk. I love how he says, well, Democrats haven't presented an alternative. I'm here to run on like national security. As if, like, the dominant philosophy in the Democratic Party isn't hawkishness. It is. It is. You know who uh, dissents from that? Ilhan Omar, Ro Khanna, Tulsi Gabbard, Bernie Sanders. I'm running out, dog. I'm running out. <clears throat> Excuse me. The rest of the Democratic Party is like, oh, another war? Yeah, why not? Fuck it, another war. I don't know if you were paying attention, but Obama was bombing eight different countries. I don't know if you were paying attention, but Hillary Clinton ran in 2016 on, in many ways, overt hawkishness. We got to get more involved in Syria, for example. We got to escalate more with Russia. I mean, she didn't say, a, uh, to my knowledge, she didn't say a word about getting out of Iraq and Afghanistan when she ran. So where, where did this idea come from? Like, you know what this country needs? Another hawkish politician. Because the other 95% of American politicians who are massively hawkish, that's not enough. <laughs> Dude, you're an embarrassment. At, think about this, guys. Think about this. At a time when the U.S. government is actively trying to overthrow the Venezuelan government, which will create another crisis and an even bigger refugee crisis than we're seeing right now. At a time when they're trying to do that. At a time when they're trying to overthrow the Iranian government. At a time when we're permanently in Syria, as they announced that they'd, they'd be. Even after Trump said, oh, we're getting out. Then come to find out we're not getting out, and we're staying there permanently. At a time when we're still in Iraq and Afghanistan. This jackass runs for president, and he's like, well, I'm a Democrat running on national security. God, Seth. Uh... Okay, then, I like how, like, the arguments are just so... You've heard me say this before, and you're probably tired of me saying it, but I say it because it's true. And actually, he might be the worst example of this. Seth Moulton is stuck in, like, a previous generation. He's a previous era's politician with his fake smile and his perfectly combed hair. And his argument was, you know, this is the weakest president we've ever seen. What does that mean? <laughs> he's so weak. He's so weak. What does that mean that he's weak? What does that mean? Does that mean he's not doing enough bombing? And he's not hawkish enough? Does that mean he's too hawkish? It obviously doesn't mean that. That's not what he's trying to say. He's weak as in he's, you know, fragile as a person. I think that's totally true, but I also don't think that's a strong line of attack. 
Then he says, he cozies up to our enemies and abandons our allies. Okay. The abandoning our ally shit has to stop, and the cozies up to our enemy shit has to stop. Abandons our allies. Israel and Saudi Arabia get whatever the fuck they want. Whatever they want, no matter what they do. They commit war crimes on a Tuesday before lunch. And we roll out the red carpet and give them more weapons and give them support and give them money. Abandons our allies. We've never been closer with Israel or Saudi Arabia. And by the way, that's a bad thing. I would love it if he abandoned our allies of Saudi Arabia and Israel. Fuck Saudi Arabia and Israel. Jesus Christ. He cozies up to our enemies. Really? Is it cozying up to our enemies by trying to overthrow the Venezuelan government and the Iranian government? Is that cozying up to our enemies? You know what he means. He means like, oh my god, we're not like already at war with Russia, so that's a bad thing. You should really be more mean to Vladimir Putin. Or you're cozying up to Kim Jong-un by not, you know, pushing to the brink of war. The one fucking bright spot in this dipshit's foreign policy is that we haven't escalated with Kim Jong-un. And what's the one thing they focus on? Oh, cozying up to our enemies, are you? Huh? You should go back to, like, going to the brink of war with them. Vote for me. Fuck you, dog. Fuck you. Um, and then finally he says, He goes after the great John McCain. Yeah. John McCain. Oh, yeah. The fawning love and adoration heaped on John McCain by mainstream media is in no way indicative of how average Americans feel about him. I just want to make that clear. So all this, like, you know, establishment Democrats, establishment Republicans, that's all, oh my God, John McCain and they nut. Like, no, reel it in. Reel it in. Yes, uh, he passed away. Yes, it's not good when anybody passes away and you can be upset about that. No, that doesn't mean you have to act like he had this pristine record when he did not. And he says you can't, his main argument against Trump, you can't trust him. Again, I don't know what that means, man. You think people looked at this fucking buffoon from a reality show who does a, you're fired, shtick. And they, the first thing they thought was, yeah, I trust him. No. The whole point of Trump getting elected was that people were sick of the status quo. Now, ultimately, Trump continued to perpetuate the status quo. But the original appeal of Trump was that he was supposed to be against the establishment. And what is Seth Moulton running on? I am the establishment. Don't you love me now? No, I think you're a joke. I think you're a sad, sad, silly person, and I think you need to go away. 